Hey guys, this is Mike, and I'm here to give you a overview of the High Level Snapshot Manager tool. This is an amazing tool that allows either a solo snapshot developer or a team of snapshot developers or even an agency manage all the different snapshots that you have. It scales up from if you're just managing one snapshot or if you're managing 20, 50, 100 snapshots, 100 snapshots might be a bit uh, a lot, but if you are managing that much, talk to me. I'll help you implement this. Uh, so let's just dive in. We're, we're going to go through a very quick setup. There's a ton of details that we could get into, but um, this, quite frankly, could be several hours if we went that way. So I'm just going to show you the highlights, show you some dummy contents so that you can get using the tool and start to modify it to whatever you guys need. So let's just jump in on the major features that we're looking at. So when you first uh, load it up in uh, the high-level snapshot manager, we're going to start working left to right. Um, and just by the nature of this tool, when you do set things up, you're going to probably have to go through this uh, maybe two or three times on your first go through because as you all these different tables relate to each other. And so as you start filling things out, you'll have more information and more things that you can then go back and fill out once you've but it takes having them filled all out the first time before things really get rolling. So that caveat out of the way, let's just jump into it. So agencies is where you're going to put, if you're managing multiple agencies, you would put all the different agencies you have here. And if you're just a single agency or you're only running one snapshot for your own company, just put your own company here because it's reliant on things. So you would name uh, your agency, you would list what snapshots you can you can link to different snapshots that you that you have, the different user roles that are associated with those agency, what the agency does best in core services, and then all the sub accounts if you want to be able to manage all their sub help them manage their sub accounts. You can also put their go high level link in. Uh, sub accounts, this one, if you're also managing sub accounts for your agencies, uh, well, you're going to be able to put them here. So in this case, we have Mr. Financial Success because this is a financial planner agency. They help financial planners. Um, the tech that is assigned, the tech support person that's assigned to it, uh, which product or which snapshot. Let's just update that as we go. The snapshot that um, that that they have which agency is this sub account attached to um, because when you do break it down into all sub accounts you'll be able to group them and see them all at a glance or you can create individual filters for individual filter by agency here and then you can just make duplicates of these views as you go and there's user roles so you're going to be able to sort by all roles the snapshot development team, the agency roles like the uh, account manager, the data entry people, your Google Ads specialist, and then the sub account roles would be the clients who actually uses the snapshot, the admin, the salespeople, the owner of of the uh, the company, all that kind of stuff. And what you'll be able to do is to have a detailed list of what are all the different roles and who actually uses, what are the functions uh, of all the different roles that need to be filled. How And when you have that information, it makes developing your snapshot much, 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 much better. So you can group them all by marketing agency and all your internal snapshot team. They just I wanted them at the top. So anyone that doesn't have an agency is part of the snapshot team. So they would all go here. So you can fill out things like, hey, you can create a snapshot designer. Uh, what does he do? Uh, uh, manages the snapshot. You know, client feedback. You know, you want to put more specific details um, in here. Um, and then you have the actual users. Who's actually the actual people, the names, their email, phone number, notes about them. This Jimmy salesman, he smells. So in this case, we have the financial planner snapshot and then we have the sub account and then you can see all the actual uh, the actual people on that are attached to the account this is again more if you're going to be managing the uh, helping the snapshot the helping uh, your agencies with kind of the tech support with some of their their account management um, but it is really useful to, to keep this info here. So at a glance, you can have some notes about what it is 
all these different sub accounts and any kind of particular needs or or people uh, in it. And then we also have you can create different filters for all of the different types of uh, roles. Um, these are just some suggested ones. If you have a really robust snapshot development team, you might only have one for each one. Uh, then you have the snapshots themselves. These are the actual snapshots. So in this case, we have the financial planner accelerator snapshot. We know what the agency is, who the designer is. We have a product, the product code that's associated with it. And I always say one letter for that. Um, you have any kind of, uh, the uh, anything that's going on the roadmap this should actually not be a test this is the roadmap uh the product map if you have like a link to a a, a you know a, a map of all the different um you know all the different workflows uh, you can put that there and then there's all kinds of other little connections that relate to all the different sections um and so if you want to be able to see all the information about that snapshot that is contained within all these tables, it's all aggregated here. And then if you want to see by uh, all agencies, you can see all of them uh, right here. Cool. Um, and we even have a gallery version if you need that. Fun stuff. Next thing is we have the product roadmap. This is where you keep your idea boards and the planned features that you want to add to your snapshot. Snapshots are never done on the first go. Uh, there's always new things you want to add and you want to keep those ideas um, here in the ideas board. And so for Create Ant, so for instance, in, in the financial planner accelerator, uh, we, have a, uh, the, we have a calendar booking module. So that's a subsection of the snapshot that's dedicated to just booking leads but we want to add a branding page for the calendar. So we don't just want to link to the actual calendar. We want to add that branding page. So we have a status, it's on the idea board. Maybe we have a bunch of numbers that you can make up what those numbers mean, but they're here for you to use it to be able to estimate how much work it takes for a project. Priority, what sprint it's part of. And sprints is kind of like a, uh, like in one month, you might add all your projects that you're going to do for a particular client to this one sprint. Um, you can have all kinds of information about this, um, this idea that you want, how you want to implement it, when it was created. All, there's all kinds of information that you, can, um, that you can put here and some things that get built in for you. But this is how you can manage all your products. Um, you can also have a client feedback form and the individual client board uh, roadmap. So you can see all the different projects that you have on your ideas board. You can move them uh, as it goes from approved, design, QA, done, all that fun stuff. Moving along, we have a module. So I have a whole training on what modules are, but uh, in, a, in a nutshell, what a module is, is dividing up your snapshot into sets of features, maybe three to five different features, like your booking module, your review uh, generation module, your lead nurturing module, that kind of stuff. So it's it's a way of organizing your snapshot into smaller, more manageable chunks. And so you can see uh, all of the different uh, modules that you have. And we ha I have them uh, grouped by uh, products so that you can then see all the different modules. As you add other snapshots, you'll see all you all the different modules with each snapshot. You put a number, a single digit uh, code for each one, uh, and you can see what users are are part of it. You can have you know the purpose, the key results, uh, any tests that you want to do for it. Speaking of tests, you can also organize. All, uh, track all of the different tests that you need to do to make sure that your snapshot is working. If your snapshot's not working, you need to know. So create a, uh, a series of tests. I suggest three to five tests for every module so that you know that one, it's working, and two, how is it performing? Uh, maybe you can add in conversion rate. Uh, check the conversion rate of your calendar booking. How many people that come to the page versus how many people actually book? Uh, whatever you want to do for that create your tests there. We have asset types. This is a static section that you won't update very often, but all it is is just to give us a rubric and putting a code to the different asset types that we have, which we use in our asset tracker. This is where you can track every single asset in a snapshot, every automation, every template, every tag. You can, ta you can tag it all. You can document that all here. And 
So, and it's also, it'll be grouped by uh, snapshot and then subdivided by the asset type when we're using asset view. There's different views you can use. Um, but you can see, hey, we got calendars. If we wanted to add another section, I'm going to show you just how the automation works. Uh, you would give it a name. Let's say we're adding a tag. So we're going to say the booked tag. We're just going to call it booked. Tickets and ticket status is if there's any errors with the asset, you can log them here. Um, and you're going to see a cool automation in a second. Um, tag tells us that this client is booked. Checklist, how you can set up their, this checklist. Eh, there's none. We'll just leave that blank because you don't need to set up a tag. It's already good to go. You would choose which product it is. In this case, the financial planner one. We're going to choose which module. It's part of the calendar booking module. Uh, and we're going to change this from calendars. This isn't a calendar anymore. We're going to change this to um, a tag. We're going to give it an ID. Uh, we're going to put a C for calendars. There we go. And sub asset. We're going to call this 01. It's the version one there. And you're going to see cool. Once you filled out all of the basic information and by basic information, it's the basic, uh, this section right here, you're going to see a tag gets automatically made it or a ticket gets automatically made. And what it does is, is it, this is a, ticket that gets added to um, that needs to be QA'd, which we're going to go into that later. But you can see here that these guys here and they can be you can delete them once they're done or even mark. And you can delete them once they uh, get done. Uh, if you delete them right away, <laughs> they'll get just get it gets added back in. Uh, but when usually these things don't get uh, you usually want to make it by uh, completing it to get rid of it. That's actually what gets rid of it. Well, we're going to go through that in a second. But anyway, this is a way for you to tracking all support tickets that need to be done for each asset. And so if there's an error, you can even add that in. So let's say that was cracked there. You can add a new ticket to this asset and maybe say tag doesn't get added. Um, status. We need a solution here. We don't know what's up. So you can track any errors and you can have a full documentation of any errors that are associated with that asset. So uh, you have an idea of what's working, what's not working in your snapshots. Uh, a whole lot of other things that we could go into here, but documenting your entire asset makes tech support a breeze. The last major section is, is it updatable? Meaning, can you override it with a snapshot update or are you going to customize it? So in a booking calendar, we're not updatable because uh, if you update that, it's going to override the calendar. So you keep that unchecked for this. And you can have a space if we need to still do some snapshot content, if you're still developing it. And then for the sub account, do you need to gather information from the sub account client to be able to implement this in your snapshot? Uh, continuing going, we have integrations. This is where you can track your zaps, your integrations, custom CSS, anything that's associated with your snapshot um, that's beyond what vanilla high level. Uh, let's, let's say a little description. I just added a little section here for tracking your integrations. Um, one important thing, you always want to know who's the integrator, who's the expert that you can call on to fix this thing because if you don't have this information and a year later an integration breaks, uh, you got a problem. So make sure you know who the integrator is. Sprints, I would have to do a full deep dive into how this whole section works. Uh, but in a nutshell, how this tool divides uh, a sprint is a, um, it's a, a series of time, let's say a one month period. Um, that you're going to do a bunch of work in. So you organize all your projects, not by individual projects, but by a sprint. You gather all your projects into a sprint saying, hey, we're going to do all these projects, all these snapshot updates, all of these tech support or these bug fixes uh, in the month of May. Um, and then next month, you start a new sprint. Uh, that's a high, quick level. Uh, sprints is a big uh, idea, but that's the nutshell. How we organize those that sprints is two types of sprints. We have uh, tech support sprints, which you use your product code um, 
for the uh, snapshot. In this case, we used S. And then I suggest using four zeros to denote your tech support uh, stuff. So this is a sprint that will never be finished because it's how we just organize all of your tech support tickets and how they get pulled in. You can see a quick tracking of where it is in the pipeline. Uh, how is old is your oldest ticket in the pipeline, et cetera. Any ticket, any tech support tickets that are active. Um, so these are for tech support. And then the second type of sprints that we look at are uh, saying your snapshot management sprint. So these are the sprints that the things that you're going to do say, hey, this month we're going to improve this feature and that feature, and we're going to add this feature to our snapshot. So tech support is kind of the high priority, do it now. And then active sprints is like the a snapshot updates. Um, we have a stats. You can put the status of each of each uh, snapshot update. Again, the product, the start date that you want, the end date for when you're going to complete that work, all the new, all of the idea board, the new features that you're adding. Those are all going to get added here. Any kind of asset fixes, anything that needs fixing in your snapshot, um, they will all show up here. That number, made up number that we had, that all gets tabulated here, and then. Uh, you have, again, a board for seeing the progress of all of your sprints and all that. Uh, you can track how many hours that it took you to do that sprint, any videos that you want to have um, to show, hey, here's all our new features, and some notes that you're going to have for, hey, how did we do on this project, and how, what do we want to do next time? Uh, again, <laughs> I'd have to go in really deep, but play around in here. There's a lot of cool ways of organizing. Um, all your different, um, all the different projects that you're doing. Uh, the tech team. So this is where the tech team is where your kind of tech frontline tech support people are going to be. Uh, all new tickets kind of get added here. If they want to see all the latest tickets, we have a triage section for those tickets. You can see all support tickets in a board form. All sprint tickets. So these are all your new updates. And you're going to see as we create um, new assets, that automation creates a, a support ticket to tell us, hey, this is in progress. Um, and once this is just a, a little automation to save you time, because every single asset you make, you want to make sure it gets QA'd. So they get put in progress. And once you're done with them, you can just move them. So this is, hey, that, that new calendar, you can move them to the QA so someone can QA. Then you can test it, et cetera. You can change these statuses all you want, but this is just what I think works really well. If you're the QA team, I just added an extra view so you can see all the ones that need either a solution or quality assurance or uh, you know, quality checks. And then you can make, um, you can uh, filters by client. You can create a tech form that will create, that you can give to your client so that they can submit tech support requests. And then you can also see their sprints as well. So every client has a support board and a sprint board. So they can see the updates to their snapshot. And you can share these views with the client uh, so that they can, and you can even in, you can even take that link and put it right in their ClickUp software too. So it's, it's really flipping cool. So before I get this too much further, that is the high level snapshot manager in a nutshell how you can quickly kind of use it and play around with it. I hope you, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on it. But we're going to, I'm going to be continually updating this as I go. This is what I use to actually manage my snapshots. This isn't just some, you know, coaching thing. This is actually what I use to get work done. It's built off of, it solves all the problems that I've ever had with managing a snapshot or managing agency clients and just trying to reduce the amount of information overload that I have to keep in my head. You can get it all here. And what's beautiful about this is that if you use it and you actually go through and fill out everything, you don't just skip a line because ah, I don't want to figure that out. If you actually implement every single one of these sections, it'll make you a powerful force. It'll give you all the data you need to be able to let your clients know that and to make smarter decisions about how you're managing and and updating your snapshots. So let me know what you guys think. If uh, there's anything that's not clear, love to hear about it. But this is uh, my little gift to you guys and I hope you get make lots of money with it.